Welcome to your complete beginner's guide to the DJI Mini 4 Pro. We are going to be looking at what everything in the box is and does, your first steps and how to get started, what all the buttons on the controller do, how to fly the drone, the DJI Fly app, flight modes including the new ActiveTrack 360 feature and the best settings that will help you get the best video and images possible from this incredible little drone. We are also going to be looking at a few tips and tricks like how to use cruise control when flying, how and when to use ND filters, offline maps so that you don't need to use an internet connection to view the maps, which is perfect for when you are recording in remote locations, the DJI flight simulator so you can practice flying the drone, and waypoints which allows the drone to fly a pre-planned path automatically. If you would like to re-watch or rewind to any part of this guide at any time, I put timestamps down below to make this easy. And if you want to find out more detailed information about the DJI Mini 4 Pro or pick it up, you will also find links to do that down below. Alright, let's get you up to speed on the DJI Mini 4 Pro. Let's start by taking a look at everything that comes inside the box. And when you open the box, the first thing you will see is this shoulder bag, which is super useful for transporting your drone, controller, batteries and a few accessories when you're heading out to different locations. So let's unzip this shoulder bag and take a look at everything inside it. Now it's worth mentioning that this is the fly more combo we are looking at, which alongside the shoulder bag includes two additional batteries, making three in total, a charging hub and a few additional propellers. But there is a standard combo which is also available. And inside the first item you will see is the drone itself. And the first thing you want to do is go around the drone and remove all the stickers and labels. Now also included and fitted to the drone is the gimbal protector and this will protect the gimbal and camera off the drone whenever you are transporting it in the shoulder bag. Also fitted to the drone is the included prop guard and when fitted this holds the propellers securely in place. The next item we have is the intelligent flight batteries and these are what allow the drone to have up to 34 minutes of flight time. Also included is is this two-way charging hub which you can use to charge the drone's batteries by connecting it to a power source. But this is called a two-way charging hub because you can also use it as a power bank. With the drone's batteries inserted into it, you can attach this charging hub to a device such as your mobile phone and use the power of the drone's batteries to then charge that device. The next item is the controller and this is what you will use to control and fly the drone. Now depending on which combo you purchased, you will either have the DJI RC N2, that's the controller you attach your phone to, or you will have the DJI RC2, that's the controller with the screen built in. Now in the top compartment of the shoulder bag, you will also find spare propellers, now the propellers in the DJI Mini 4 Pro are held on with little screws and so also included is this little screwdriver which you can use to loosen or tighten the screws. Also included is a USB to USB-C cable and a USB-C to USB-C cable and these can be used for attaching your drone or charging hub to a power source to charge your batteries or to attach your drone to a computer to download the videos and images of its internal storage or micro SD card included. Now if you purchased the DJI RC N2 remote, you will also have two additional cables included, a USB-C connection cable and a lightning connection cable. And these allow you to change the connection cable of the controller to suit the type of mobile you are using. Now before we take a look at the drone overview, if you are looking to create high quality drone videos, then something that is very important is sound effects and music. Simply take a look at this before and after. Massive difference, right? But where can you find top notch, copyright free and safe to use sound effects and music? Well, for that, I personally use and recommend today's video sponsor, which is Epidemic Sound. With an impressive library boasting over 40,000 tracks across various genres and playlists, Epidemic Sound makes it a breeze to discover that perfect song. Need the soothing sounds of waves or the roar of a waterfall? Their collection of 90,000 diverse sound effects has got you covered. Epidemic Sound also owns 100% of their music and sound effects, and because they're royalty free, you can confidently use them in your projects, 
even when sharing on platforms like Instagram or YouTube. They also have a new game-changing feature, the sound match tool. If you have ever spent hours searching for the ideal track, Soundmatch is your new best friend and massively speeds up the process by suggesting the perfect song for your drone video in a matter of seconds. All you have to do is upload your video and in a matter of seconds it analyzes the tone, mood and rhythm, offering you music recommendations that takes your video to the next level. And it has been a game changer for me when finding music for my projects. If you would like to give Soundmatch and Epidemic Sound a try, follow the link in the description down below for a free one month trial and experience firsthand how their music and sound effects can transform your drone videos and sequences into cinematic masterpieces. Let's now take a look at what everything on this drone is and does. And the first thing you will want to do is remove the propeller guard and you can do this by popping open the small button on the side of the propeller guard and this will allow you to open the guard up and remove it from the drone. The next thing you will want to do before flying is to remove the gimbal guard and you can do this by pressing the tab on the bottom of the gimbal guard up and then lifting the gimbal guard away from the front of the drone. If you want to replace the gimbal guard, you want to line the gimbal guard up with the vision sensors and camera on the front of the drone and then simply press it into place until you hear a small click. To open the legs of the drone up, you want to pull the top ones down and away from the drone and then the bottom ones simply swing round towards the front of the drone and lock into place. Now the first thing you will see on the front of the drone is the gimbal with the camera sitting on top of it. Now this gimbal is three axis stabilized, tilt, roll and pan and this is what will keep your footage smooth as your drone is moving around in the air. On the front of the camera, you will see this small cap. Now the cap included with the drone is simply there to protect the camera lens, but you can remove this to replace it with filters such as an ND filter. Now just above the camera, you will see these two fisheye sensors. There are also two additional fisheye sensors on the top of the drone looking backwards and two binocular sensors on the bottom of the drone. And this is what gives the drone 360 omnidirectional obstacle avoidance and allows the drone to automatically bypass obstacles as it flies around. At the end of the two front arms of the drone, you will see these two landing legs. And this is what keeps the drone stable when you're landing it on uneven surfaces and will prevent the drone tipping over and the propellers clipping things like tall grass. Looking at the top of the drone, you will see these two large vents which help to keep it cool. And then just below the DJI logo, you will see these four status LEDs and a power button. Now with a battery inserted, if you press this power button once, then four LEDs will light up to indicate how much power is in the battery inserted. And to turn the drone on, you simply want to press this button with a short press, followed by a long press. All four LEDs will light up, you will hear a noise, and the drone will turn on. To turn the drone off, it's the same again. A short press followed by a long press. All four LEDs will go out, and the drone will now turn off. At the back of the drone, you will see this USB-C port. And this allows you to attach the drone to a power source, and this will charge a battery and insert it into the drone. Or you can use this port to attach the drone to a computer and download the videos and images of the internal storage or micro SD card insert it. Now this drone comes with two gigabytes of internal storage, which is around enough space for 60 JPEG images or around three minutes of 4K footage. So it's not going to be enough if you're planning a full day's filming, but it will be enough to save you if you forget a micro SD card when heading out to capture a location. Now, if you haven't already picked up a micro SD card, on screen now, I will put a list of DJI recommended micro SD cards. I personally recommend a minimum of 128 gigabytes of space so that you have enough space for lots of videos and images. And I will put a link down below to the one I personally recommend and use. Now you insert this micro SD card into the slot next to the USB-C port. The large opening underneath this is where you insert the battery. And to do this, you simply want to push the battery into the drone until you hear a click to make sure it's securely locked into place. To remove the battery, you want to press the two tabs on each side of the battery together and then pull the battery back and away from the drone. 
Looking at the bottom of the drone, just beneath the two binocular sensors, you will see this infrared sensing system. And this allows the drone to know how high above the ground it is whenever it's landing or taking off. And below this, we have two skids, which helps to keep the drone off the ground and keep the Envision sensors clean. And in between them skids, we have this auxiliary light. Now by default, this auxiliary light will come on automatically when taking off or landing in low light or nighttime scenarios. And this helps the drone see the ground more clearly so it can detect a suitable landing space. And it can also help it hover more precisely in place when it's low to the ground in them low light scenarios. Now in the two back legs of the drone, you will also see the aircraft status indicators. Now firstly, these help illuminate the drone when it's in the air, which is useful to help see it in the night sky. But these can also change to different colors and blink in different patterns to help you see the status of the drone. So when everything is working as it should, these will slowly blink green. But if they start to blink yellow quickly, that means the drone has lost signal to the remote controller. If they blink slowly red, that means the drone has a low battery. And if they start to blink red quickly, that means the drone has a critically low battery. Looking quickly at the propellers of the drone, and something to be aware of is that all the propellers on the drone are not identical. They are two different types of propellers, and it's the diagonals which match. Now on the packets of the spare propellers, you will see a graphic of which arm to put the propellers onto. But if you look closely at the propellers of the drone, you will see the propellers on the top right and bottom left have a small indentation, which matches up to this little symbol on the arm of the drone itself. And the top left left and bottom right propellers don't have this indentation which matches up to the missing indentation on the matching arms and this can help you know which propeller goes where when you're changing them out on the drone. Let's now take a look at the controllers and walk through what everything on them is and does. So let's start with the DJI RC2. Now the first thing you will want to do is attach the joysticks to the joystick bases. Now the joysticks are located on the back of the controller and you simply want to pop these out and then screw them into the joystick bases. And these joysticks are what you use to maneuver and fly your drone around in the air. And we will look at exactly how you do that later in this guide. Now looking at the front of this controller, the first button to the left is the return to home and pause button. Whenever you're flying your drone around in the air, if you get distracted and want your drone to come to a quick stop and hover in place, you can simply press this button once and the drone will pause and come to a quick stop and hover in place. If you press and hold this button, you will engage return to home and the drone will automatically fly back to its home point, which is where you took it off from. Next to this, we have a slider with three options. Cine, Normal and Sport. And these are the three different flight speeds you can set for your drone. So slow, medium and fast. Next to this, we have our power button. Now, if you press this once, you will see on the four status LEDs on the top of the controller, how much power is in the controller. To turn the controller on, it's the same as the drone. A short press followed by a long press. All the four LEDs on the top of the controller will light up. You will hear a beep and the controller will turn on. To turn the controller off, it's the same again. A short press followed by a long press and the controller will now turn off. Looking at the top of the controller, we have these two antennas which fold out. And these are what send the control inputs to the drone for it to move around in the air and also receive the video feed back to display it on the controller. The first button you will see on the top left of the controller is the start or stop recording button. So when you are in video mode, if you press this button, you will start recording a video. And if you press it again, you will stop recording a video. Now just above this is our gimbal dial. And by turning this, you can rotate the gimbal upwards or downwards on the drone. On the top right of the controller, you will see the shutter button. And this is what you will use to capture an image when you are in photo mode. And just above this is our zoom dial. So by turning this dial one way, you can zoom the camera in, and by turning it the other way, you can zoom the camera out. On the back of the controller, we have these two customizable function buttons, and you can change what happens when you press either of these buttons in the DJI Fly Up settings, and I will show you how to do this later in the guide. So you could have one set to recenter the gimbal to the horizon when you press it, and the other set to turn on or off the auxiliary light when you press it. On the bottom of the controller, you can see an area to insert a micro SD card. Now, why might you want to have a micro SD card inserted into the controller? Well, with the controller, you can do screen recordings. Now, screen recordings are different to capturing video with the drone's camera because it also includes all the interface elements over the top of the video. And this might be useful if you want to look back 
at what settings you were using when capturing a particular subject. And these screen recordings can be stored to the microSD card that you have inserted into the controller. Now the DJI RC2 also comes with 32 gigabytes of internal storage, so you can do screen recordings and store them to that internal storage off the controller itself. Now, if you want to download them screen recordings off the controller's internal storage or the microSD card insert it, you can do that by attaching a cable to the USB-C port on the bottom of the controller, and this will allow you to download them files. This USB-C port is also where you will attach a power source to this controller to charge it. Lastly, these two small grommets on either side of the bottom of the controller are where you can attach accessories to the controller, such as a lanyard. Looking briefly now at the DJI RC N2, and you can see a lot of the buttons are the same. Again, we need to attach our joysticks to the joystick bases, and the joysticks are located on the bottom of the DJI RC N2 controller. To attach your phone to this controller, which you will need to do to be able to see your drone's camera feed and control the drone, you want to lift the cage up on the top of the controller. Underneath the cage, you will see this small cable and this is the cable that you will use to attach the controller to your phone. Now by default this controller is set up for a lightning connection to work with an iPhone but if you're using an Android device you will need to change this to the included USB-C cable. Now to do this you simply pull the other end of the cable out of the top of the controller to remove it from the controller and then you want to get the USB-C adapter cable and simply connect this back into the top of the controller. Then you want to place your phone into the controller cage and attach the cable into the side of your phone. Looking at the front of the controller and on the top left we have this single function button. And again, you can customize what this button does when you press it in the settings menu of the DJI Fly app. We also have our pause and return to home button, our flight modes toggle, which is where we set the flight speed of the drone, and our power button. Again, a single press will show you on the four LEDs on the front of the controller how much power the controller has. And to turn the controller on, it's a short press followed by a long press until all four LEDs light up and you hear a beep to turn the controller on. The button on the top right of the front of the controller is our photo video toggle button. So when you press this, you will switch modes. So if you are in photo mode and you press this, you will switch into video mode. And if you are in video mode and you press this, you will switch into photo mode. On the top of the controller, we have a combined shutter and start or stop recording button. We also have a single scroll wheel. And by turning this, you can tilt the gimbal upwards or downwards. Now to zoom in or out using this scroll wheel, you want to press the function button and hold it while at the same time turning the scroll wheel, and this will now allow you to zoom in or out using that scroll wheel. Lastly, on the bottom of this controller, we have a USB-C port, and this is what you will use to connect the controller to a power source to charge this controller. So before we can go flying, we first need to go through the initial setup of the controller and the drone. So you first want to make sure that you fully charge the controller and the drone, and then you want to turn them on. Now, if you're using the DJI RC N2 controller, the first step you will want to take is to download the DJI Fly app to your phone. And you do that by simply going to the iOS or Android store, searching for DJI Fly, and then downloading the DJI Fly app. Now, once downloaded, you will want to connect your phone to the controller and open the DJI Fly app on your mobile phone. Then the next steps of the initial setup are the same for both controllers. And after the introduction video plays, the first thing you will have to do is select your language. You then will have a few agreements to accept. And after you have accepted them, you will next need to select your country and region. The next thing you will want to do is to join a Wi-Fi network. So that can be your home Wi-Fi network, or it can be a mobile hotspot from your phone. Next, you will be asked to select a time zone. And once you have done that, you will get taken through to a screen where you can create or log in to your DJI account. Once you have done this, you will get asked to activate your device and link it with your account and this will serve as your proof of warranty. Now once you have completed this you will see a quick start guide appear on the screen. Now you can skip this by pressing the skip button on the top right of the screen but it's worth doing this little quick start guide as it goes over some of the functions and buttons off the controller. The next screen after the quick start guide is the home screen. And after a few seconds, the drone should automatically pair with the controller. And you will know this has happened because a picture of the DJI Mini 4 Pro will appear on the controller screen. Now, if this doesn't happen, you will need to manually pair the controller to the drone. 
To do this, you want to press the connection guide button on the bottom right of the controller. Then you want to select the DJI Mini 4 Pro. And after a few seconds, the controller should automatically connect to the drone. Now, if the controller has still not connected to your drone, there is one final step you will need to take. You simply want to press this unable to connect to aircraft button on the bottom of the screen. Then you want to press the pair button. The controller will start making a beeping noise. And then you want to press and hold the power button on the drone for a few seconds until it starts making a beeping noise. And after a few seconds, the drone will now pair to your controller. Now, if there is a firmware update available for your controller or drone, you will see a firmware update message appear on the top left of the controller screen. And if there is an update available, you will want to make sure you do this before the first time you go flying so that you have all the latest features available on your drone. Now to do this, you simply want to press the update button on this message. The update will start to download and then once it is downloaded, it will automatically be installed to your controller and drone. And your controller and drone may turn on and off a few times as this process happens. Now, if you purchase DJI Care Refresh, which is DJI's version of insurance, there's one additional step you will need to take to make sure you get flyaway coverage, and that is to bind your controller to the drone. Now, to do this, you simply want to press profile on the home screen. You want to go to device management. You want to go to the value added service subheading. And then you want to press bind new device. Then you will want to press next and then press confirm. And this will now bind your controller and drone so that you get flyaway coverage included with your care refresh cover. Let's now dive into the DJI Fly app and how you can use it to control your drone settings, what all the icons mean and buttons do. So the first screen you will see is the home screen. Now the icon in the top right of the screen is the tutorials and courses button. So when you press this, you'll get access to some lessons about the DJI Mini 4 Pro. On the top left of the screen, you will see some location information. And then next to that, we have this fly spots button. Now, if you are connected to Wi-Fi, when you press into this, on this map, you will see different colored zones. And these zones have various restrictions on how you're allowed to fly your drone. And you can simply tap into each of these zones to see the restrictions in that area. Now, on the bottom left corner of the screen, you will see this album icon. And if you press into this, this will show you all the media which is currently stored on your drone or the micro SD card inserted into your drone. Now you can tap into each file to preview the video and images, and you can also download this file to your controller or mobile phone directly by tapping the download file button on the bottom right of the preview. You can also delete the clip or image you are previewing by tapping this bin icon on the bottom left of the preview. The next icon you will see is the Skypixel icon. Now Skypixel is DJI's social media platform and you can register and post the videos and images you capture with your drone if you want to do that. But you can also tap into here and see the videos and images other people are posting and use that for inspiration when you're capturing your own images or videos with the drone. The next option is the profile button. Now, when you press into this, you will be able to see some of your account information. Now, let's head into the drone's camera view, and we can do that by pressing the Go Fly button on the bottom right of the home screen. Now, there are a lot of icons in this screen, but don't worry, we are going to go through them one by one. Now, on the top left of the screen, you will see an icon saying N mode, and this is our flight mode. That's our speed setting. Next to this, you will see your flight status. So this will display warnings if your drone is not ready to take off yet. So as you can see here, it's telling you to take off with caution as the drone hasn't acquired GPS yet. Now, when your drone is good to go, this will change to say take off permitted. Now, you can actually tap into this to get your flight checklist. And this will let you know if your drone is ready to fly. Below this, we can set our return to home altitude. Now, if you trigger return to home using the controller, or if you lose signal between the controller and the drone, return to home will automatically engage. The drone will rise up to a set altitude. And this is where you set this altitude. And another new augmented reality feature on the DJI Mini 4 Pro is as the drone is returning back to you, you will see a flight path appear on the screen, showing you the route the drone will take as it automatically flies back to you. Below this, we have our flight protection settings, and these are restrictions which you can set on the max altitude and the max distance. Below this, you can see the storage location. So this says SD card because I have a micro SD card inserted, and you can see how much space is available out of the maximum space available 
on that SD card. You can also format the SD card by pressing this format button, but be aware that this will wipe all the files which are currently stored on that micro SD card. Moving over to the top right, and this first symbol shows you what percentage of battery you have left. And you can actually tap into this and it will show you how long until certain things happen. So you can see how long until the drone will return to home, how long until the drone will do a forced landing, and how long until the battery is completely depleted. Next to the battery percentage indicator, you will also see the time until the battery is depleted. And then next to this, we have our signal strength indicator. So this shows us the signal strength between the controller and the drone. The next icon will show you the status of the vision sensors on your drone. So when this is white, all the vision sensors are working as they should. When this shows as red, which will happen when the drone is currently on the ground and not in the air, or when you switch into sport mode, because in sport mode, the obstacle avoidance turns off, this icon will change to red to show you that them obstacle avoiding sensors are no longer working. The next icon with the small picture of the satellite is how many satellites the drone is connected to. Now it's very important to wait until this icon changes to white, which lets you know that it is connected to enough satellites for a GPS lock for two reasons. Firstly, the drone uses that connection to stay stable in the air and stay stationary in one position when you're not moving it around. But secondly, it uses that GPS signal to automatically return home. So if you don't have a GPS lock, the drone won't be able to automatically fly back to its home point. Now a nice new feature of the DJI Mini 4 Pro is the new augmented reality home point. So as you fly the drone around, on the screen you will see this small edge icon and this is showing you where the home point is set to and where the drone will return back to if return to home engages. Moving over to the right side of the screen, and this is our mode icon. So this is how you can change between video and photo mode, for example. So when you tap this, you will see all the modes available for this drone. So the first option you will see is our photo mode. And in here you can see we have single shot mode. So when you press the capture button, you will capture a single image. You have auto exposure bracketing mode. And in this mode, when you press the shutter button, the camera will automatically take multiple images at different exposures, underexposed and overexposed to allow you to combine these in your image editor afterwards to achieve an image with higher dynamic range. The next option we have is timed shot mode and you will be able to decide a time which the camera will pause for when you press the shutter button before capturing an image. And lastly, we have burst mode and you can choose between three, five or seven burst images to be captured when you press the shutter button. The next mode we have is video mode and this is the mode you will use to capture your videos with the drone. We also have night mode, which changes the way noise reduction works to help you get cleaner looking footage at nighttime with less noise. And we also have slow motion mode, which will allow you to capture slow motion footage with this drone. The next option we have is master shots. Now in master shots mode, you can select a subject or point of interest by drawing a box over it. And when you hit go, the drone will automatically perform multiple drone moves around the subject, such as a drone, zooming in and out, a circle and more. Then once complete, it will fly back to you and you will have a complete drone sequence of your subject or point of interest, complete it for you automatically. The next option we have is quick shots. Now just like master shots, this allows the drone to perform single drone moves automatically off a point of interest or subject. Once you draw a box over your point of interest or subject, you can choose from a range of moves, such as a drone, circle, rocket, helix, boomerang, and asteroid. And then when you hit go, the drone will automatically perform this drone move. The next option is hyperlapse mode. And hyperlapses are basically moving time lapses, which will capture images at various intervals and then combine them still images into a video to make it look as if time is moving faster. In free hyperlapse mode, you can fly the drone around using the joysticks as the drone is capturing a hyperlapse. In circle hyperlapse mode, you can draw a box over your subject and point of interest, and the drone will automatically perform a circle hyperlapse around that subject. With course lock hyperlapse mode, when you start the hyperlapse, the drone will start flying in a certain direction until the hyperlapse is complete. And lastly, we have waypoint hyperlapse mode, where you can move the drone around and set multiple waypoints that when you hit go, the drone will automatically fly between them waypoints as it's capturing a hyperlapse. Going back to the mode button, and the last option we have is pano mode. And in here you can choose between a sphere, 
180 degree, wide angle, and vertical panorama to capture when in this mode. Below the mode button, we have our shutter or start or stop recording button. Below that, we have our album button. And just like pressing the album button on the home screen, this will take you into your media tray where you can see and preview all the videos and images on the internal or micro SD card storage on your drone. To the left of this, you will see the camera orientation button. So when you press this, the drone's camera will rotate into vertical mode. And if you press this again, the camera will rotate back into landscape mode. Below this, we have our zoom button. And you can use this in two ways. If you tap this, you can change between one times, two times, and three times digital zoom. Or if you want more control, you can press and hold on the zoom button. And then by sliding your finger upwards or downwards, you can have more control over the zoom level of the camera. Now, something to be aware of is that this is a digital zoom, so it's cropping in on the image. So the further you digitally zoom in, the lower quality the video will become. Below this button is our focus setting. So when this shows as AF, this means autofocus. So the drone will automatically make sure that everything in the image is sharp. Now you can change to manual focus by tapping this. And then to control the focus, you want to press and hold on this icon. And then by sliding your finger upwards or downwards, you can control the focus of the drone. Now at the bottom, you will see a picture of a little person, and this is close focus. And at the top, you will see pictures of two mountains, and this is infinity focus or far away focus. To get back to autofocus, you simply want to tap this icon again until it shows AF. Now I personally always leave this set to autofocus to make sure my images are always in focus. And I recommend that you leave this on autofocus too, because if you change this to manual focus, you could end up in a scenario where you forget to change it, you capture lots of images, and and then they all end up being out of focus. Now on the bottom left of the screen, you will see this small map icon and you can expand this map by pressing this button. Now this map will show you the area you are flying in, but it will also show you the location you are standing, the location of the drone and its orientation and the home point. Now you can expand this map into full screen mode by pressing the map button again. And then you can zoom in and out on the map by pinching your fingers inward on the controller screen or outward on the controller screen. Now on this map, you also have a find my drone button. By pressing this button, the map will show you the last known location of the drone. And you can also press the start flashing and beeping button, and this will start the drone making a beeping noise so you'll be able to hear it and potentially find it faster. Now by default, the map preview will be pointing true north. But if you press this compass icon on the top left of the map preview, you can change it to face in the orientation of the controller. So as you move the controller around, the map will also rotate. The icon in the top right of the map preview will allow you to zoom in or zoom out on the map. This icon on the bottom right of the map preview changes you in to the radar compass mode. Now the radar compass can show you a few things. Firstly, it's a compass, so it shows you the direction your drone is currently facing, and it will also show you the position of the drone relative to you with the controller and its home point. Now you can center this radar compass on the drone, or you can center it on the controller by tapping this icon on the top left of the radar compass. And now the compass is centered on the controller. To change back to it being centered on the drone, you simply want to tap that icon on the top left again. There is also a blue line on this radar compass, and this shows the horizon relative to the drone. So if you fly the drone forward, this blue line will rise up as the drone pitches forward. And if you fly the drone backwards, this blue line will lower down as the drone pitches backward. To change back to the map preview, you simply want to press this icon on the bottom right of the radar compass. Next to this, you will see your flight metrics. So you can see the height the drone is in the air and the distance the drone is away from the home point. You can also see how fast the drone is flying forwards or backwards and how fast the drone is ascending or descending. On the left side of the screen, you can see our auto takeoff, auto land, and return to home button. So when you press this with the drone on the ground, you will see a takeoff button appear. And if you press and hold the circle on the middle of the screen, the drone will automatically take off. If the drone is in the air and you press this button, you will see two options. Firstly, you can have the drone automatically return to home by pressing and holding the return to home option. Or if the drone is hovering above an area you want it to land, you can press and hold the auto land button and the drone will now automatically descend, land on the ground and turn off the propellers. Above this, we have our waypoints button. And in this mode, you can create flight paths for your drone and have it fly along that route automatically. 
and I'll be showing you how you can set this up later in the guide. Now the drone's camera has two modes, auto mode and pro or manual mode. Now in auto mode, the drone will automatically adjust the ISO and shutter speed to get an image that it thinks looks properly exposed. And you have pro or manual mode where you can manually control the ISO and shutter speed to manually control the exposure of your image. So let's look at the settings for each mode and then I will explain which mode you should use in different scenarios. So in auto mode, we first have exposure compensation. Now when you press this, if you change this value to a positive number, you are telling the drone that you would like the image to be brighter and it will adjust the ISO and shutter speed automatically so you have a brighter image. If you set this to a negative number, you are telling the drone you want the image to be darker and again it will adjust them values so that you will get a darker image. I recommend just leaving this set to 0, zero. The next icon under res and FPS is where you will press into to set the resolution and frame rates of the videos you are capturing. So I recommend setting your resolution to 4K so you get the highest quality videos possible. And for FPS, I recommend setting this to 30 FPS. And the reason why I recommend 30 FPS is because social media platforms such as Instagram actually recommend a minimum of 30 FPS. And because that's where I post most of my video clips to, I recommend setting your drone to 30 FPS. Next to this under storage, you will see how much space in terms of video recording minutes is available on the micro SD card inserted into your drone. Now, if you change to photo mode, this will change to show you how much space in terms of photos is available on your drone. Now to change into pro mode where you manually adjust the ISO and shutter speed, you can do that by tapping the auto icon on the bottom right of the controller screen. And now you will see a lot more options become available to you. So if you tap this area on the bottom right of the screen, you can now see you can adjust the ISO and shutter speed. Now both the ISO and shutter speed have this auto icon. Now when this auto icon is yellow, that means the drone is still automatically adjusting the ISO and shutter speed. So to be able to manually adjust the ISO, you want to tap the auto button until it goes gray. And now you can slide your finger left or right on the ISO setting to increase or decrease the ISO. Now the ISO is basically the sensitivity of your drone's camera sensor. So as you increase this value, the image will get brighter. But something to be aware of is as you increase the ISO, you will be increasing the noise and grain and artifacts on your video image. So the quality will get lower and lower as you increase the ISO. So I recommend for daytime recording that you always keep this set to 100 to get the cleanest image possible. If you're recording in lower light or nighttime situations, you may need to increase this, but do be aware as you increase this, you will start to get noisier and noisier images. Below this, if we turn auto off for shutter speed, you can see we can increase or decrease our camera shutter speed. Now, as you increase the shutter speed, your image will get darker, and that's because each video frame is exposed to light for less time. And as you decrease this, the image will get brighter, and that's because each video frame is exposed to light for longer. Now, something to be aware of with shutter speed is the more you increase this and the faster the shutter speed gets, the more crisp and sharp each frame of your video will be. And this can start to make motion look unnatural because we are used to seeing motion blur. To get motion blur in your videos, you need to use a lower shutter speed. Now there is actually a formula for the correct shutter speed you should be using, and that is called the 180 degree shutter rule. Now that rule states that your shutter speed should be twice your frame rate. So because we're using a FPS of 30, our shutter speed should be one over 60. And this will then give us natural looking motion blur in our drone's videos. Now, if you've set these settings on a bright sunny day, something you might notice is that your image becomes completely overexposed, completely blown out, and it all looks white. And that is because we are using a lower shutter speed, so our camera is being exposed to more light. So how can we continue to use these settings to get natural looking motion blur, but also have a properly exposed image? Well, that is where ND filters come in. Now, ND filters are basically like a pair of sunglasses for your drone's camera. And what they do is they let less light pass through them to hit your camera sensor. Now, ND filters come in different strengths, and as the strength increases, so does the darkness of glass on that ND filter. So what I recommend doing is starting with the lowest strength ND filter, applying that to the drone, checking the exposure of your image, 
And if it's still overexposed, move up to the next strength of ND filter and keep doing this until you get an image which is properly exposed, but also being able to use a lower shutter speed. Now, if you don't have ND filters and would like to pick some up, I highly recommend this set from Freewell for the Mini 4 Pro. And I will put a link down below where you can pick them up. Now, if you tap on the left side of the manual video settings, you will see an additional menu become available. Now at the top of this, you can change the white balance. So by default, this is set to auto because the auto icon is yellow. And this means the drone is automatically controlling the white balance. But if you turn auto off, you can then use this slider to increase or decrease the white balance. I recommend just leaving this set to auto and having the drone automatically set the white balance. Again, below this, we can set our resolution and FPS. We can also see the storage, which is available on the micro SD card or internal storage of the drone. And then we have three color modes available for the DJI Mini 4 Pro. Firstly, we have normal. And this is going to give you images which are good to go straight from the drone and don't require any color grading. But we also have HLG and D-Log AM. Now D-Log AM is a flatter color profile and this will preserve more highlight and shadow details so that you can get more dynamic range in your videos. And it's also 10-bit, which compared to the normal color profile can provide more vibrant colors with smoother transitions between these colors. However, something to be aware of is D-Log AM footage coming straight from the drone will look very gray and very desaturated. Before you can use these videos, you have to color grade them. So a low D-Log AM footage can look better than the normal profile footage. You must color grade them first in post to be able to get them benefits and make the footage usable. Now DJI do provide a LUT which you can download on their website and I will put a link to that LUT down below. And you can simply download this and apply it to your footage to get you 99% of the way there. So here you have a decision to make. The normal color profile will be perfect for you if you're looking to turn around your footage very quickly. If however you're looking the best quality possible from the drone and don't mind doing a bit of color grading or maybe you enjoy color grading your footage in post then you will get better results using D-Log AM. For me personally I like to turn my footage around quickly and I also think the normal color profile provides excellent looking footage so that's the mode I use all of the time. Now, if you're capturing footage in D-Log AM, you can actually get a preview on the screen of what the color graded footage may look like by turning color display assist on. And this will add contrast and saturation back to your footage so that you can see what the end result might look like. But just be aware that this is not affecting the footage which is stored to the micro SD card on the drone. It's only changing the preview you are seeing on the controller. Below this, we have our coding format. H.264 and H.265. Now I recommend setting this to H.265, but something to be aware of is that this is a newer encoding format with a better compression efficiency. Now this has the benefit of meaning your file sizes will be smaller, so you can capture more clips with the total storage of your micro SD card. But because of that better compression efficiency, more processing power is required to encode and decode the video. So you will require more processing power when it comes time to edit them clips. So if you have captured some clips in H.265 and when you're editing them, your computer, which is maybe lower powered, is struggling, then you can switch to H.264, which requires less processing power, making it more efficient on older and less powerful machines. And below this, you can see we are capturing our videos in MP4 format. Okay, so when should you use auto mode and when should you use pro or manual mode? Well, if you're flying your drone high in the air or flying it slowly and you're not capturing fast moving subjects, then I recommend using auto mode. The reason for this is you're not capturing a lot of motion, so you don't need to worry about motion blur. And in auto mode, the drone does a fantastic job of automatically adjusting the shutter speed and ISO to get a properly exposed image. And this just saves you time having to set them settings manually and allows you to capture more on location. If however, you are flying your drone low to the ground or flying it very fast, or you're capturing a fast moving subject, then you will want that natural looking motion blur. And to achieve this, you will want to use manual mode with the settings we have previously went over. Now, as a summary on screen now, I'm going to put all the video settings I use for the DJI Mini 4 Pro. So feel free to pause this video or take a screenshot so you can enter them into your own DJI Fly app. Now let's take a look at the photo settings and what you should set them to to get the highest quality images possible from the DJI Mini 4 Pro. 
So to be able to change our photo settings, we first need to change from video mode to photo mode. Now when capturing images with the DJI Mini 4 Pro, I always just leave the exposure set to auto. We don't need to worry about motion blur when capturing images and the drone does a really good job of controlling the exposure automatically in auto mode. Now if we go to our settings menu and go to the camera heading, you can see we have a few photo specific options appearing in this menu. And the first option we have is our image format. And we can choose between JPEG, RAW, and JPEG and RAW. Now using the JPEG format, you will get smaller images. However, compared to JPEG, RAW images contain a wider dynamic range and have more data in them, which gives you much more flexibility when editing your images in a photo editor. You will have much more flexibility to recover highlights and shadows of your images. And so using the RAW format will result in you getting better looking images from this drone after you have edited them in your image editor. So for that reason, I recommend using raw format. The next option we have specific for photo mode is our aspect ratio. And we can choose between four by three or 16 by nine. Now I recommend setting this to four by three as this will capture an image with the full size of the camera sensor. And you can always crop a 16 by nine out of the four by three afterwards in your image editor. Lastly, we have resolution and you can choose between 12 megapixels and 48 megapixels. I recommend setting this to 48 megapixels so that you get the highest quality images possible from this drone. Again, on screen now, I'm going to put a summary of all the photo mode settings I use. So again, feel free to pause this video or take a screenshot so that you can enter them into your own DJI Fly app. Now let's dive deeper into the settings menu on the DJI Mini 4 Pro. So to get into the settings menu, you want to tap these three dots on the top right of the screen, and this will open the safety tab on our settings menu. Now the first option we have is our obstacle avoidance action. So we can turn obstacle avoidance off altogether by setting this to off. You can also set this to break mode. So when the drone encounters an obstacle in semi or sport mode, it won't allow you to fly any further. It will simply break in place. Or you can set this to bypass. And in bypass mode, the drone will automatically fly around an obstacle and continue on its route. Now when you select bypass mode, you will see a new option appear called bypassing options. And you can choose normal mode or nifty mode. And what this basically does is if you change to nifty mode, it reduces the bubble, the safety bubble around the drone, allowing it to fly closer to obstacles as it bypasses them. Below this, we have an option to display radar map. And when this is turned on, you will see a radar map appear on the screen whenever your drone is close to obstacles. And this will show you what direction the obstacle is relative to your drone. Now below this we have our return to home options. So the DJI Mini 4 Pro actually comes with two return to home modes. We have the preset return to home mode, which is where the drone will rise up to a set altitude when return to home is engaged, fly back to above its home point, and then land. But we also have optimal mode, which is the advanced return to home mode. Now this mode differs from preset because instead of it flying up to a preset altitude, the drone can automatically work out what height it needs to rise up to to safely fly over any obstacles as it comes back to you. Also, when optimal mode is turned on, the drone can automatically fly around any obstacles as it returns home back to you. So because of this, I recommend setting this to optimal. But if you do want to set this to preset, below this you will see the return to home altitude setting, and this is where you decide what altitude the drone will rise up to before it flies back to you if return to home is engaged. Now, as mentioned earlier in this video, it's very important to understand that the drone isn't flying back to where the controller currently is. It's flying back to its home point, which is where you initially took the drone off from. So if you have walked a good distance away from where you took the drone off from, maybe you're tracking yourself, then something I recommend doing is updating the home point so the drone will come back closer to you where you are now currently standing. Now to do this, you want to press this update home point button. And when you do this, you will now see a map. Now on this map, you can see the home point is now automatically above where your drone is now currently at. And you can also move your finger around on this map to move the home point to a manual location if you wish. Now when you are happy with where the home point is now currently set, you can press okay. And now you have changed the location the drone will fly back to if return to home engages. Below this, we can change our AR settings. So if I tap into this, you can turn on or off the AR home point. You can turn on or off the AR return to home route, and you have an option for AR aircraft shadow. 
Now the aircraft shadow appears whenever you tilt the gimbal down towards the ground as you bring your drone down to land. And this will show you a visual representation on your screen of where the drone is going to land. Now you can turn on or off each one of these AR settings in this menu. Below this we have our flight protection settings again. So again you can adjust the max altitude and max distance for your drone. Below this we can calibrate or compass or IMU and you will get a prompt on the screen when you need to do this. Below this if you tap into battery info you can see some information about your batteries including the serial number but also how many charging cycles each battery has had. And below this we have our auxiliary LED options. So if this is set to auto, the auxiliary LED on the bottom of the drone will automatically come on when you're taking off or landing your drone in low light or nighttime scenarios. But you can also manually control this by turning it on or off using this setting. Now below this we have our unlock geo zone option. So if you're flying in a restricted area and you have permission, this is where you can go in and unlock your restriction to be able to fly your drone. Below this we have the find my drone option and this will take us into the find my drone map that we looked at earlier in this guide. Below this we have advanced safety settings. Now when you press in here you have a very critical setting that you should be aware of called signal loss. Now this is where you can decide what happens when the drone loses signal to your controller. So by default you can have this set to return to home. So if your drone loses signal to the controller, the drone will automatically fly back to the home point. But you can also have the drone descend if it loses signal or just hover in place. And below this is the emergency propeller stop option. And you want to make sure this is always set to emergency only. The reason for this is if this is set to any time and you hold your joysticks in the direction shown on the screen, the propellers will stop even if the drone is in the air and it will fall out of the sky. So by having this set to emergency only, this will prevent this from happening when your drone is flying in the air. So if we slide back up to the top of this settings menu, you can see the next heading we have is for the control settings menu. So let's tap into that. And the first option you can see is our unit setting. So you can change what units are used for things like the height and speed of your drone on the interface. And you can change this between metric meters, metric kilometers and imperial. Next option beneath this is subject scanning. So if we turn this on and I point the drone towards a subject such as myself, you can see it now adds a small plus icon over me. And if I press this, the tracking box will get automatically applied to me. And then I can choose from some of the tracking options on the bottom of the screen. And we will go into the tracking features of this drone later in the guide. Below this, we have an option called focus track settings. And in here we can tweak the distances and heights the drone will fly at when tracking a subject. And again, we will look at this later in the guide when we are walking through how to use active track. Below this, we have our gain and expo tuning settings menu. Now this is an advanced settings menu that allows you to tweak how the drone reacts in terms of how fast it flies and how responsive it is when you make inputs on the joysticks of the controller. So you can see we can set our max horizontal speed, our max ascent and descent speed, and our max angular velocity. That's how quickly the drone will rotate. Then we have yaw smoothness. Now yaw smoothness adds a buffer from when you take your fingers off the joysticks. So if you are rotating your drone and you take your fingers off the joysticks, you can either set this up so the drone comes to an immediate stop or the drone actually slows that motion out itself to come to a slower, smoother stop. We also have brake sensitivity. And again, this is how quickly the drone will come to a stop when you let off the joysticks. Scrolling down, we have our expo curve. And this allows you to change how the drone reacts speed-wise as you move the joystick further and further away from the center point. And you can change this for the up and down motion of the drone, the yawing motion, which is the rotating motion of the drone, and pitch and roll. Lastly, we have two gimbal tuning options. So we have our max control speed for the gimbal, which changes how quickly the gimbal will move up and down when you use the scroll wheel on the controller. And we have tilt smoothness, which again adds that buffering motion to the gimbal tilt when you let off the scroll wheel. So you can have the gimbal come to a complete stop when you stop moving the scroll wheel, or you can have the gimbal come to a slower, smoother stop when you take your finger off that scroll wheel by adjusting this value. Now, if you scroll up to the top of this menu, you can see you can also adjust all these settings for the three individual flight modes. 
Sunny, Normal and Sport. To go back to the settings menu, you want to press this back arrow at the top left of the screen. Below this, we have two gimbal modes. Now the default is follow mode, and this will keep your horizon level as you move the drone around in the air. But we also have FPV mode, and when you press this, the camera will become locked to the drone's orientation. So the video image will tilt when the aircraft rolls, giving you this FPV feel as you're flying around. Now, if you notice your horizon is not level when you're flying around, you can fix this by selecting the gimbal calibration option. And then with your drone on a level surface, if you follow the on-screen steps, this will calibrate the gimbal so that your horizon becomes level again. Below this, we have stick mode. Now, when you press into this, you can actually change what way the drone moves around depending on the inputs you make on the joysticks. So the default is stick mode two, and that's the mode I use. And in this mode, you can see if we push the left joystick up, the drone will ascend. And if we push the right joystick up, the drone will fly forward. But if we change this to stick mode three, you can see that has now changed. So now the left joystick upwards makes the drone fly forwards and the right joystick upwards makes the drone ascend. So if you want to change this to your own personal preferences, then you can do it in this menu. Next, we have our button customization options. Now, when you press into this, this is where you can change what action happens whenever you press a function button on the controller. If you ever need to do an RC calibration, then you simply press the RC calibration button. If you need a quick reminder on how to fly your drone, there is also this flight tutorial option, and this will take you through a guided 10 minute beginner flight tutorial. Lastly, at the bottom, there is a repair to aircraft button, and this will allow you to repair your controller to your drone if for whatever reason it ever becomes unpaired or if you are setting up a new controller with your drone. Going across to the camera subheading, and the first thing you can see is our video format, which is MP4. Below this is another area where you can decide your color profile. So again, we have normal, HLG, and D-Log AM. And again below that, we can also change our coding format from H.264 to H.265. Below this, we have an option to turn on video subtitles. Now, video subtitles are a recording of the inputs to the drone, the drone parameters and settings. And it will save this in real time onto a subtitles track of your video. And then when you are in your video player watching the video back, if you turn on subtitles, you can see the metrics overlaid over the video. Now, I personally never use these, so I turn this option off. Now, if you ever have any issues of lights or light bulbs flickering in your drone's video, then you can go in and manually adjust this anti-flicker option, but I recommend just leaving this set to auto. The next option is the histogram option, and this is a super useful feature on the DJI Mini 4 Pro that will help you get properly exposed images. So if I turn this option on and go back to the camera view, you can see we now have a histogram graph on the screen. Now a histogram is basically a graph that represents the tones of an image. Now this is useful because if it's a bright sunny day and you maybe have some glare on your controller screen, you might struggle to see how well certain areas of your image are exposed, such as the sky. But you can look at this graph to see a visual representation of your exposure to double check to make sure nothing is overexposed or underexposed. Now the idea with a histogram is you want the majority of the graph in the center of the histogram or spread across the center. So if the graph is completely crushed to the right side, you have an overexposed or too bright image and you want to lower your exposure compensation value if using auto mode or change to a stronger ND filter if you're using manual mode. And if the graph is crushed to the left, you have an underexposed or too dark image and you want to increase exposure compensation in auto mode or reduce the strength of the ND filter fitted to your drone if using manual mode. Below this, we have peaking level. And if you turn this on when using manual focus, this will put a red outline around everything that is sharp and in focus. The next option we have is our overexposure warning. And I recommend turning this on as it's another useful feature to make sure you never get an overexposed part of your image. Now, when you turn this on, any area of the image that is overexposed, such as the sky, will start to get this zebra pattern appear on it. And this is letting you know that that part of the image is overexposed. And if you reduce the exposure, you can see them zebras disappear. Next, we have our grid lines option. And when you turn these on, this will superimpose grid lines onto your camera view, which can help you do things like keeping your subject centered as you fly the drone around or frame your clips by using things like the rule of thirds. Now you can turn on each one of these individually. So we have a center grid, a thirds grid and center point. 
or you can turn on all three of these. Now the ones I like to turn on are the center grid and the center point option as I find these super useful for making sure when I'm doing moves such as an orbit around a point of interest that I keep that subject centered. Next we have a new option called frame guide and this again will superimpose different aspect ratios onto your controller screen so that you can frame your clips better for them aspect ratios. Now it's important to note that this isn't saving them videos, it's not recording them videos in that aspect ratio. It's still capturing in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. It's just overlaying these different ratios as a frame guide so that you know when you do that crop in post that your subject won't get clipped at the edges, for example. Below this is another area where you can change your white balance. Again, I just leave this set to auto. Below this, we have our style options. So when we press into this, we can actually change the sharpness and noise reduction of our image. So we can decrease the sharpness to make our image less sharp and we can increase the sharpness to make our image sharper. We can also increase how much noise reduction the drone is doing to our footage, and we can decrease this to reduce the noise reduction being applied to the footage. I personally find the footage looks best if you leave these at zero, zero, which is their default settings, and so I recommend just leaving them set to that. Below this, again, is an area where we can change where our files are being stored to, the microSD card inserted, or the internal storage. If you wish to format either the microSD card storage or internal storage, with that storage selected, you can press this format button and that will completely wipe that storage. Below this, we have custom folder naming. So when you press into this, you can set a name for the folder that the videos and images you are recording will be saved to. You also have custom file naming, and this allows you to add text to the end of each file name that is stored to the storage. And this can help you differentiate between different files if you were recording in different locations, for example. Lastly, on this menu, we have our cache options. So when you are flying and recording video, the controller is always recording a backup of that low res preview that you are seeing on the controller screen. So you want to make sure that you have cache when recording turned on, and then you can decide the max cache capacity. Now by default, this will be set to two gigabytes, but I recommend that you set this to auto. Moving over to the transmission menu, and this is where you can tweak a few things about how the controller is transmitting to the drone. You also have an option to set up live streaming, and you can do that by going into the live streaming platforms option. For the frequency, I just leave this set at its default value. However, if you are having signal issues, you can change this frequency manually to 2.4 gigahertz or five gigahertz. And then below in channel mode, you can see all the frequencies the controller is currently using. Now the last menu we have is our about menu. And in here you can find out information about the drone, controller and batteries, such as their serial numbers. But you can also check for firmware updates in this menu. So if you go to aircraft firmware, you can see the version of firmware your drone is using. And you can also press the check for updates button to check for an update. Scrolling down to the bottom, we have an option to reset all settings. And this will reset all the settings to default and restart the drone. Or we have a clear all data option. Now this option will be for if you are selling your drone, you want to make sure that you clear all the data off the drone and the controller. But do be aware that if you use this option, you will be completely wiping everything from both the drone and controller, including the aircraft logs. So if you crash the drone and need it repaired, DJI might actually ask for these aircraft logs. So it's very important that you don't clear them. Now the DJI RC2 actually has one additional menu and that is the controller menu itself and you can access this by swiping down from the top right of the controller screen. In here you will see options to configure the Wi-Fi of the controller, to mute the sounds coming from the controller, to take a screenshot and to start or stop a screen recording. You can also change the brightness of the controller screen by sliding this brightness slider up and down. And you can also change how loud the sounds are coming from the controller by sliding this volume slider upwards and down. Okay, we're now ready for our first flight. And there's a few things I recommend doing. The first thing you wanna do is to turn on your drone and your controller. And I also recommend you turn on a personal Wi-Fi hotspot on your mobile phone and connect your controller to it. And that way you'll have maps available via the internet. Now, when it comes to a location for flying, I recommend coming to a large open area free of any obstacles such as a football pitch or my personal favorite, the beach. Now you have no reason to be afraid of bringing your drone for the first time to an area with water. You can fly it out over the water 
and you can be assured you're going to have no issues and out over the water there's going to be no obstacles. Another benefit of being near the beach is there's probably not going to be as many people as if you were in a football pitch for example and that's going to let you learn the controls, learn how to fly the drone without the anxiety of having someone watching you do it. If you are a little bit nervous about flying over the water just keep it over the beach and you will be absolutely fine. So how do we get the drone in the air? Well there's two ways to do this. The first way is using auto takeoff and then I'm going to show you auto landing. So to do that simply press the auto takeoff button on the left and press and hold the takeoff button. And after a few seconds the drone will automatically take off up into the air. Now if you want to auto land the drone simply press the same button and hold the button to land and after a few seconds the drone will automatically land in front of you. It really is as simple as that. Now if you want to take the drone off manually you can do that by pressing the two sticks downwards and inwards that will start the propellers. Nothing will happen the propellers will just spin and then to take it off press up on the left stick and the drone will rise up into the air. To land the drone manually simply pull down on the left stick the drone will hover for a few seconds and then it will automatically land. Now when it comes to your first flight you have a choice of three flight modes semi, normal and sport. To begin with it's my personal recommendation that you keep the drone in semi mode. This is the slowest mode that results in the slowest movements for the inputs you make on the joysticks and will be the safest way for you to fly. Now one of the first things I really recommend you do the first time you fly your drone is take it off into the air and fly it a little bit away from you but not that far away that you will not be able to see it. So I've simply flown it behind the camera now and I can still see the drone there. And I want you to press and hold the return to home button. Press and hold it for a few seconds and you will see the return to home kick in. Keep an eye on the drone and watch as the drone starts to fly back towards you. So the drone again is behind the camera now. It's now coming back towards me. It's now above me. And what's going to happen is the drone is going to stop above me and it is going to lower itself and land right in front of me where it took off. So it's just turning to face the way it was when it took off. Here it comes now. And the drone has now come down automatically to land next to me. It's going to take a few seconds and then it's just going to land on the ground next to me. As simple as that. I had no input on the controller here whatsoever. Now that might seem like a very strange thing to do the first time you go flying but here's why I think this is a great thing to do. It's one of the first things you do whenever you go flying. The connection on the DJI Mini 3 Pro and many other DJI drones is absolutely fantastic but there is going to be a point at some point in the future whenever you're out flying where you fly the drone behind an obstacle such as a tree and you're going to get some connection issues. The screen might freeze, the screen might go black and as a beginner this is an incredibly unnerving experience but really all that happens is if you lose connection to the drone the drone will automatically go into return to home mode, it will fly up and it will start to come back towards you where two things can happen. One, you can take control of the drone whenever you get transmission, whenever it comes close to you again or it will just come back as it did there and land in front of you. But like I said the first time that happens and you lose connection issues it is so stressful you're just you know what the drone's supposed to do but it's you've never seen it happen before so it's incredibly unnerving. Well by doing that by watching return to home work the first time you fly the drone then you'll be incredibly confident if you ever do have connection issues whenever you're out flying that the drone will be able to come back to you. Okay so with the drone in the air let's now take a look at how we use the joysticks on the controller to fly the drone around and maneuver it in the air. Now it's important to note that this demonstration will be for stick mode 2 which is the default stick mode setting but do remember if you change the stick mode in the settings it changes the way the drone moves for each input on the joystick on the controller. Now in stick mode 2 the first move you can make by pushing the left joystick up is rising the drone in the air. So if you push the left joystick up you can see the drone rises up and if you pull that left joystick down you can see the drone will descend. So this is how you change your altitude of the drone. Now if you push that left joystick left you can see the drone will rotate left and if you push it right you can see the drone will rotate right. So your left joystick can rotate the drone in position. It won't slide the drone left or right but it will rotate it in its current position. Now to fly the drone forwards you want to push the right joystick forwards and you can see the drone is now flying forwards. To fly the drone backwards you want to pull the right joystick backwards and the drone will now fly backwards. And if you want to slide your drone to the right you want to push the right joystick right and the drone will now start sliding to the right. And if you want to slide your drone left you want to push the right joystick to the left to slide to the left. So the right joystick controls the forwards and backwards motion and also the sliding right and sliding left motion. 
Lastly, to move the gimbal upwards or downwards to either point down towards your subject or point upwards towards the sky, you want to use the scroll wheel just below the start and stop recording button on the DJI RC2. Sliding this scroll wheel to the left will lower the gimbal down towards the ground and then sliding this scroll wheel right will start to rise the gimbal up towards the sky. Now if this is your first time flying a drone, something I recommend doing is making single inputs on the joysticks of the controller to learn what way the drone will move when you move a joystick in that direction. And the reason for this is you want to build up the muscle memory so you can get to a stage where you can just fly the drone around in the air without having to think too hard about what way you need to move a joystick to move a drone in that direction. If you have to overthink every input you make on the joysticks of the controller, you're probably not going to get smooth footage. So for your first couple of flights, you simply just want to practice flying the drone around in the air until you get to a stage where you're flying the drone around with the joysticks without really thinking about, okay, so I want the drone to fly up, so I need to push the left joystick up. I want the drone to slide right, so I need to push the right joystick right. You'll get to a stage where you are just naturally moving them joysticks around. And then you can start working on maneuvers or drone moves that require multiple joystick inputs. Because most of the maneuvers you will make when capturing footage with your drone will actually require you to move both joysticks at the same time. So for example, if I wanted to do an orbit around myself to the right, I would push the right joystick right to start the drone sliding right, but then I would also move the left joystick left to have the drone rotate around to the left at the same time. And so you want to get comfortable making multiple inputs on the joystick at the same time. And then the last thing you want to practice is just being smooth. You want to practice moving the joysticks slowly, subtly, and smoothly. And you want to really try to prevent making harsh or jerky movements on the joysticks, as again, that's gonna result in you getting jerky looking footage. Now, if you wish to practice flying your DJI Mini 4 Pro before heading out on location and doing it for real, you can actually do this virtually using the DJI Virtual Flight app, which is available for your phone. Now to get access to this app, you simply need to download the DJI Tri Virtual Flight app from the Android or iOS store. And then with the app open, to get access to the Virtual Flight Simulator, you want to press the Explore button on the bottom of the app, and then you will see the Virtual Flight option for the Mini 4 Pro at the top of the screen, and you want to tap into this. And after a few seconds, the Virtual Flight mode will have loaded. Now, once you're ready to virtually fly the drone, you want to press this takeoff button on the middle of the screen, and then you will get guided through a quick tutorial on how to use the virtual joysticks on the screen to ascend, descend, rotate, fly forwards and backwards, and slide right and left. Then you are free to fly the drone around this virtual environment and get a feeling for how the drone reacts to different stick inputs as you make them on these virtual joysticks. Now to get a more realistic view of what you might see from the drone's camera when you're flying it in real life, you want to change into the simulated drone's camera view. And you can do that by tapping this icon here. And now you will be seeing a simulated view of the Mini 4 Pro's camera view. Now alongside being able to fly the drone around with these virtual joysticks, you can move the gimbal up and down with this slider on the left. And then what I recommend doing is finding a point of interest on this virtual map and using the virtual joysticks, practice getting different angles and doing different moves around that point of interest. And as you do this, try to be as smooth as possible as if you were recording this point of interest in real life. And this can help you get a feel for what it might be like when you head out to fly your DJI Mini 4 Pro for real. Now another super useful feature, especially if you struggle doing complex drone moves, maybe you just find it difficult to make multiple inputs on the controller, or when you do, the movement just ends up being jerky, is cruise control. Now cruise control can help you do these complex drone moves because you can start a drone movement, enable cruise control, and much like cruise control in a car, the drone will continue to do that movement even when you let off the joysticks. And you can use this to have the drone do the move for you, or you can lock one or two inputs into the controller, let's say a push forward rise up, and then once the drone is doing that movement for you, you can focus on controlling things like the gimbal to keep your subject centered as it flies forward and upwards, and this means you just have to concentrate on making less inputs on the controller itself. So let's take a look at how to do just that. The first thing we need to do is map cruise control to one of the function buttons. So again, let's go back to the settings menu and then choose either the C1 or C2 button. And under control, you want to select cruise control. Now what you want to do is go back to camera view 
And for a demonstration, let's do a push forward rise up while moving the gimbal down to keep the subject centered. But this is a complex move that requires three inputs on the controller. So let's have cruise control do two of the inputs for us. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start flying forwards and upwards slowly. And once I have the movement the way I like it, I'm gonna press that function button we had mapped to cruise control. And now you can see cruise control is enabled and the drone is flying forwards and upwards for us. Now my hands are completely off the controller. The drone is flying forward and rising up by itself. So now I can focus on the gimbal only to keep my subject centered as it is flying forward and rising up, meaning I can get a super smooth drone move without having to worry about making too many inputs on the controller. Now to stop cruise control, all you need to do is press the same function button on the back of the controller and you will see cruise control disabled appear on the controller screen and then the drone will stop moving. Now something else that you can do, which is incredibly useful, is use waypoints. Now if you don't know, waypoints allow you to mark position points on a map and you can do that before you go out to a location or you can do that with your drone in the air to mark them points and I'll show you how you use them two methods in a second. And then once you have that route plugged in, you can start the drone flying that route automatically and the drone can repeat that route over and over again. So let's first take a look at how you create a waypoint route using the map. And this can be done before you even get out to location. So with your drone on and the controller on, you want to expand the map view by tapping the map on the bottom left of the controller screen. Then you want to tap this waypoint icon to go into waypoint mode. Now, wherever you tap on the screen, you will add a waypoint. So let's tap on the screen to add our first waypoint and you will see a small symbol with the number one in it. And this is because this is our first waypoint. Now, if I tap into that waypoint or if I press the one on the bottom of the screen, you can see we can set some parameters for this waypoint. So we can set a camera action. And if I scroll along the bottom, you can see I can have it do things like take an image, start recording or stop recording. We can change the altitude. We can change how fast the drone is flying. We can change our heading. So we can have the drone point towards the route it is flying, or as it flies the route, we can have it point towards a point of interest or subject. And we can change our tilt angle. So let's go back and let's now add two more waypoints. So I'm going to add a second one here and a third one here. And you can see as I do this, it's showing the route that the drone will fly as you add these points. Now, if you were creating this waypoint mission at home, you will want to save it so you can load it when you get out on location. So to save it, you want to press this icon here and then press the save button. And now this will have saved the waypoint mission to your controller. Then when you're out on location, you can simply press that icon again and press on the waypoint mission that you want to load and you can see your waypoint mission has now been loaded. Now the last thing you will want to set before you start the drone flying is the global parameters and you can do that by pressing this icon here and then here you can change things like the global speed, that's the speed the drone will fly along the route. You can choose what happens at the end of the waypoint mission, what happens when the signal is lost and the starting point for your waypoint mission. Then when you're ready to start your waypoint mission with the drone in the air, simply hit go and the drone will now start flying this route automatically. Now there is actually a second way to set up a waypoint mission and that's by using the drone in the air to mark waypoints. So what I've done is I've moved my drone into the first position I want for my first waypoint. So again, I'm going to tap the waypoints icon to go into waypoint mode. And then to mark this position as my first waypoint, all I need to do is tap the C1 button on the back of the controller. Now, if I go into map view and move my drone out of the way, you can see it's marked that waypoint as my first waypoint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm now going to fly my drone into the position I want for the second waypoint, which is here. And then by pressing that C1 button again, you can see I've added another waypoint. And if I just add a third one by moving the drone around, I'm happy with that position. And if I tap the C1 button again, you can see we've added a third waypoint. And if I go back into map view, you can now see this route has been added by simply using the drone in the air to mark these waypoints by tapping that C1 button when the drone is in the position I want. Now, something you might encounter if you have flown your drone in remote locations with no internet connection is the fact that the maps won't display any information because they have no internet connection to download that information to display it. But you can actually download the information before going out to these locations to the controller and store them as an offline map so that when you are flying in more remote locations, you can still see information 
on the map. Now you can store these maps to the internal storage of the controller or to a micro SD card. And to do this before heading out to a remote location, you want to turn the controller on, make sure it's connected to a Wi-Fi connection, press the profile button on the home screen, and then go to offline maps. Now you want to start zooming in, and as you do, you will see a small white rectangle appear on the middle of the screen. And this is the area that will be downloaded to the controller storage. So unfortunately, you can't just download the entire world map. You can only download smaller portions of the map. So you want to move the map around and zoom in or out until that white rectangle completely covers the area that you're intending to fly your drone. Now, once you have that white rectangle completely covering the area you're intending to fly and that you wish to download to the controller storage, you will see just below it how much space this will take up on the controller storage. So here you can see it says selected map size is about 2.9 megabytes. And below that, you will see the total available storage on the controller. So if you are happy and wish to download this to your controller storage, you simply want to press this download button and then you will be able to name the region. So once you have named the area, you simply want to press yes and then you will see the download progress as this area of the map is downloaded and stored to your controller. Now this may take a few seconds and once complete, that portion of the map will now be stored on the controller so that when you head to this location, there will still be information showing on the map even if you have no internet connection. Now let's take a look at the active tracking options available on the DJI Mini 4 Pro. Now to start tracking yourself or a subject, there are two ways you can do this. Firstly, you can just draw a box over your subject like I've just done over myself. And then you will see the three tracking options appear on the bottom of the screen. And you will know the drone has logged onto the subject because you will see this green box around that subject. Now to stop tracking a subject, you simply want to press this green X on the top left of that box. Now the second way you can start tracking a subject is actually to use an option called subject scanning. So if you go to your settings menu and go to the control menu and turn on this subject scanning option, if we go back to the camera view, you can see the drone is now putting this small plus icon over any subjects it recognizes that it can track. So you can see it's currently putting that icon over myself. So if I press that plus icon, you can see the drone will automatically draw that box over me and now the drone has logged onto me. Now there are three main tracking modes and the first one you will enter by default is spotlight mode. Now in spotlight mode, the drone acts like a spotlight at a concert. So the drone won't move around position wise in the air, but it will rotate and move the gimbal up and down to keep you centered. So if I start walking now away from the camera, you can see the drone isn't moving around, but it is rotating and it is moving a gimbal to keep me centered. And if I change direction and walk back towards the camera, you can see it's now tracking me as I walk the other way. But again, it's not moving around in the air. The next option we have is POI mode. And this is your orbiting tracking mode. So when you go into this tracking mode, you will see this slider appear on the bottom of the screen. And on this slider, you can choose the direction the drone will orbit around the subject and the speed. So I'm gonna have the drone orbit to the right and I'm gonna set it to a slow speed and then I'm gonna hit go. And now you can see the drone is automatically flying around me and I'm not making any inputs on the joysticks. But in this mode, you can also move as the drone orbits around you. So again, if I start walking away from the camera, you can see as I'm walking away from the camera, the drone is continuing to do this epic orbit move around me. And this allows you to get these incredibly dynamic shots. So if I stop this orbit move now by pressing the stop button and press POI again, this time I'm going to go in the other direction by sliding this slider to the left. And this time I'm going to choose a fast speed. I'm going to hit go and I'm going to walk back towards the camera. And again, you can see the drone is doing this awesome orbit move around me and it will continue to track me as it flies this circle or this orbit motion around me. Now the next option we have is the Active Track 360 mode. And to get into it, you want to press the Active Track button and then hit go. Now in this mode, you have two options. Firstly, you have Parallel mode. So if I move the drone around to the side of me and then again start walking away from the camera, what Parallel mode allows the drone to do is very simply fly along parallel next to you as you or your subject moves around. The drone will simply just fly sideways in the same direction 
that you are moving. The drone won't make any drastic rotation moves, it will just stay parallel to you as you move around. So you can see now if I turn around and walk back towards the camera, the drone isn't actually going to rotate around. Again, it's just going to fly parallel next to me, it's going to fly sideways in the direction that I am walking. So if I press stop and then go to active track again, press go and make sure trace is selected, you're going to see the exciting new Active Track 360 feature of the DJI Mini 4 Pro. When you now use Active Track 360, you will see a new dial on the bottom left of the controller screen. And on this dial, you can decide a specific orientation you want the drone to track you from. So you could have it behind you, to the left, to the right, or in front, but you could also have it off to the right diagonally, behind you to the left diagonally, etc. But also if you look closely on this dial, you can decide if you want the drone to track you from afar or close distance. So you now have the ability to decide if you want the drone to track you closely or from a further away distance. And if you go into the settings menu and go down to the focus track settings, you can also now fine tune these distances. So you can set the distance for close tracking and you can set the distance for far away tracking. And you can also set the height the drone will stay at as it's tracking you from a far distance and the height the drone will stay at when it's tracking you from a close distance. Making this new Active Track 360 feature incredibly customizable, but it gets even better. If you start with the drone in a certain orientation and distance away from the subject, but then slide your finger to a new orientation or a new distance from your subject, you will see a path appear on this dial. And this shows you the path the drone will now take as it moves into this new position. And this means you can have the drone perform specific maneuvers as it's tracking a subject. So for example, you could have the drone start at a far away distance from behind you, but then have it sweep round along beside you at a close distance. Or you could even start with the drone off to the side of you from behind at a far distance, and then sweep around all the way to the other side of you at a close distance. And you can see you can now use this system to achieve diverse tracking shots. And remember, because we have omnidirectional obstacle sensing on this drone, it's also safer to do tracking. So the drone can see all around itself whenever it's doing these highly customizable Active Track 360 maneuvers to make sure it will stop itself if it ever encounters an obstacle. So all that's left is for you to head out with your DJI Mini 4 Pro and capture some amazing videos and images with it. And hopefully this beginner's guide has helped you get up and running quickly. Now before you go, if you liked this video and you learned something new, please let me know by giving me the thumbs up and clicking that like button down below. And if you love all things drones and want to know how to get more cinematic videos and better images with your drone, then I recommend you check out my channel where I have a ton of other content to help you level up your drone game. If you don't want to miss any of my upcoming videos, then I recommend you subscribe by clicking that subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, make sure to check that notification bell so that you will be alerted when my new videos are released. It would be greatly appreciated. And if you want to stick around and watch a few more videos now, here's a few I personally recommend. I'll not keep you back any further. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you over there.